Yeah, supers get the views, but civics, they get the masses. Now sure, we all want internal blocks and a single turbo swap that can eat a child, but you know what's equally potentially not quite as awesome? Four doors, 30 miles per gallon. Now, <clears throat> I'm not saying it's a race car, but it could be. A car that hits the hearts of first time enthusiasts and 30 year olds for some reason that still listen to Suicide Boys with the windows down in a Christian town. A car that caters to college kids and small families that are just trying to find a good APR deal at the dealership. A car that when built right will quickly remind you why Honda is an S-tier car brand. I'm Alex, Alex.Martini with two underscores on Instagram, and while there was a time we helped answer if you wanted to own one of these cars, we're here to now talk about how to modify the 10th gen Honda Civic. What are you doing? <laughs> That sound is so good. By the way, if you have a Honda Civic or any modified car, do me a hot solid, head over to martiniworks.com and add your vehicle to our build threads. It takes less than five minutes and helps us along and so many others help build their car, modify their car, the whole goodies, like everything, whether it's show, track, drag, race, good, done. Like anything that you wanna do, you can do it over on Martini Works. Now back to my favorite hot boy racer, okay? The 1010 Honda Civic looks like a hot boy racer because it was designed by someone who didn't want it to look like a typical Econobox Civic that was just exiting stage left. So somebody came in by the name of Jared Hall, okay? An unfamiliar name to people like you and me, but what's important here is that the reason you see the 10th generation Honda Civic feel more sporty is because he designed the car with pillars way further back than the ninth generation. It also has the mirror fenders that mimic an additional like width to the car. Like that was all him. He did that purposely to give it that sportish look, okay? The abrupt cooling structure in the front that the Type R exaggerates in further years. Yep, you can thank Jared and his beautiful full beard. And while some people don't like how sharp the car got and how aggressive everything got, there's zero doubt that this car in fact does fuck. Okay, the tension got its fair share of goodies in the engine bay and under the skirt, including but not limited to higher quality grade steel for a quieter ride that's still lighter than its older brother. It came with fluid filled bushing for an easier yet firmer ride. Okay, the car suspension, engine and supporting goodies are all lower in the car too, making it feel and drive sharper because you got a lower center of gravity for the weight that you have in there. Oh, what's that? Variable gear ratio steering that reduces full lock by 30%? Oh, it drives better? Is that the beefier front and rear stabilizer bars? You're goddamn right. You got a turbocharged 1.5 liter, you got a 6.3 second zero to 60 from the SI model, and you got a six speed. Thank God for organizing closets because this shit is nice, okay? But you didn't come here to learn about the history of your car. You've already got that. You're here to try to figure out how to modify these goofy parallelograms so that you don't look like the kid that they made fun of when exhaust laws are played on your local news station. Because anytime exhaust laws come up, it's always a Rice Honda Civic that seems to be the butt of the joke, okay? You've come to the right place, bud. Honda Civics, they need three things to truly wake them up. A lot of air, a little bit of cooling, okay? And a decent standalone tune. We're almost in the tune zone. Okay, if you're getting into modifying the car and want to start exterior only, tune zone's not for you. Okay, I'd recommend getting like any chrome off the car, blacking it out, lowering it on some H&R lowering springs from Martini Works or BC Racing coilovers because they have every platform you could imagine. The thing to remember here though is that the car ride quality will feel a bit worse than other cars that will go through the same change because of the fluid filled bushings. It's just a small change compared to other cars. And also keep in mind that when people go for a low profile tire with their aftermarket wheels, that compounds it more. Remember, less plushy plushy, more bumpy bumpy. Speaking of wheels, the car is very hot boy regardless of what trim you get. So try to stick with like a cleaner, sleeker wheel design. A concave hybrid wheel looks fantastic on these cars and bronze or silver just slap. I try to stay away from like the gloss black because I just don't feel like it actually stands out that much. Enki has good options, but so does Kanse depending on your budget. If you're a big baller and you want the biggest and best, I would actually really recommend as, as overstated as this sounds, some TE37s like belong on this platform and especially the Type R. I don't know what it is about it, but it's a perfect look. Now, one thing that can also get a bit weird on these cars is their lack of what I would call a pronounced two-tone style arrow. Most people will go with a Type R lookalike kit, but something like from CMST is a good option if you have the unlimited money glitch. Now, honestly, you're kind of f***ed on authentic arrow here, but just try to avoid taping it on. You know who you are. You can self-tap it. You're better than 80% of the people out there. Bringing the aggressiveness through the whole car from top to bottom is a way to complete how the car looks and pretty much anything from there will be a bonus. You hear that? Somebody's knocking on my door. The tune zone's back! 
We're back because we're talking about a turbocharged engine. So say it with me. I will not modify my car without parts that need a tune, without having a tune scheduled and purchased. I'm gonna start sending out fucking DocuSigns for you to fill that shit out. I am dead ass serious though. You, you do want to get a tune. That's just like the nice Alex trying to tell you. Carmel, we're not going inside. From there, if you're looking at the Earth Dreams K20 C1 engine, a clean tune from K-Tuner or Honda is pretty much the way to go. It ultimately reduces your reliability, but you're building a race car, not a train. So be strong for the family, and while you're at it, get some good lungs for it too. That's where we start talking about bringing in some additional air. Intercoolers from Mishimoto, an air intake box that's actually designed to bring in cool air and not just look cool. You're gonna wanna stick with that, and a little schmexy downpipe will do you wonders, okay? Outside of that, you're gonna have about 90% of what you'd want with this car. Should you be a little wary on the drivetrain, I have seen people jump into upgrading their clutch for just safety purposes, but that's entirely up to you. I have a tendency to go until it dies versus replacing clutches proactively because I want to get as much out of the car part as I can so I'm not just wasting money. I'm known as what you would call a cheap ass. That's just me though, I do take home some extra plastic utensils to use later. Do what you will with that information. So how do you modify a 10th gen Honda Civic Si? It's simple. Okay, you find one that was owned by a conservative parent that thought they'd like it, but it's too small. You buy parts that aren't extreme in design because the body style is already a little bit out there. You open up the old nostrils and you invest in some good tires like Michelin or Continental to have some fun with the front wheel drive. And you always, always go for a tune with some new downpipes and an exhaust. And the cost to do all that? Well, okay, a 10th generation Honda Civic will run you about $25,000 in the mid 50,000 mile range, at least right now as I make this video. With the 75 to $10,000 in mods plus some maintenance stuff, you'll be sitting at right underneath $40,000 mark when all said and done. But that sounds like a lot for a Civic. You are getting a Honda Civic that'll last over 200,000 miles easily and has everything you need to use as a normal car. We'd stick with the 2017 and newer, with most 2016s having AC issues and some electrical problems, which are worked out in the future years, so if you can afford it, I would recommend doing that. But most importantly, if you're building or just bought a 10th gen Honda Civic Si, Come check out martiniworks.com. We're making build threads great again to help people see how cars are built and we're improving the site every damn day. I also have a cat that I'm trying to feed. If you won't do it for me, do it for Carmel. We just launched the store, so any part you may need, picking it up from us helps us restart this dream and help you as well. So check it out. Let me know what car you want us to talk about next. I'm Alex, Alex on Martini with two underscores on Instagram. Thanks for following along and talking to us below and we'll see you in like a week or so, I think. Remember, more fluff, more bump, or whatever the fuck I said.